whenever you are Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat, Par Brahma, Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhubhu Vaswaha, Tatsavitra Vareneyam, Bhargo Devasyadhi Mahi, Diyo Yonaha Prachodaya, Astoma Satgamya, Tamso ma jyotir gamya, mrityor ma amritam gamya. Om sehna vavatu, sehna bhunaktu, sehviryam karvavahi, tejasvi navadhi tamastu, ma vidvi shavahi. Om shanti, 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 om. We are on verse number 69 of Narad Bhakti Sutra. And in this verse, we learnt in Sanskrit, it goes like this Tirthi Kurvanti Tirthani, Su Karmi Kurvanti Karmani, Sat Shastri Kurvanti Shastrani. So he is saying, Purify, sanctify the sacred places. Who does it? These Bhagats, these devotees, Par Bhagat. So wherever they go, that place becomes a Tiratsthan, pilgrimage. They add glory to their actions. And they are the one who lend authority to the scriptures. Otherwise, the scriptures are what? They are inert by themselves. So these few rare saints in our society they have understood the scriptures. They have lived their life based upon the scriptures. And they are the one who give the glorious vision to the scriptures. Otherwise, scriptures are just inert books. So such a saint. So such a saint who has gained complete union with God. So parbhakti means complete union with God. His every act becomes divine. His consciousness is merged with God. This kind of a saint has nothing to attain for himself. See, our actions are what will I get out of it? But these saints, everything they do is for God. God becomes their director. They leave that, that door is in his hands. When they cook also, it's a prashad. When they serve also, it's a prashad. It's not their act. They don't worry whether it will be less or more. So with the help of these scriptures, with these teachings, we have to increase our devotion and actions to that level. Our whole life should be just like Lord Krishna said, Jeev Kalyan. Jeev Kalyan. Okay. That means live a life to help others. Okay. So these saints are in such a class. Whatever they do, they bring happiness. In others' lives, in a God's face also. So that's why Naraj is saying that whatever they do becomes a sukaram. Whatever they say becomes a shastra. Their words alone, they become shastra. Because what is a shastra? Those are the words spoken by those saintly people. And whichever place they reside in becomes a pilgrimage. Wherever they reside. See, just like we are all familiar with the Ganga, Ganga Mata, we say, it starts where? Up there on the mountains before Gangotri. It's, they say it's 19 kilometers 
बिफोर गंगोत्री अ स्मॉल होल दैट्स वेयर इट रियली स्टार्ट्स दैट्स व्हाई दैट इज कॉल्ड ए गो मुख इट लुक्स लाइक ए माउथ ऑफ ए काउ दैट्स हाउ इट स्टार्ट्स एंड व्हाट हैपेंस along the way from there down to calcutta how wide it is over there several kilometer wide what happened so many other streams they merged with it kept on merging so does anyone say that ganga is dirty no even these days we say the water in a ganga is pure we go there we still pick it up so every stream which merged into it it got the nature of ganga it became ganga so that's how these saintly people whatever they do it is pure samrath kahu nahi dosh gosai they don't have any fault in them Okay, just like a sun rays, no fault in it. So Narad Ji is saying to us that every activity of these God-realized saints is pure and holy. And you cannot evaluate their actions actually. You really cannot because our evaluation is based upon our mental structure. You cannot do that. and now in the next verse he is telling us so shortest verse just one word how did they reach there that means how can we reach there how do we become par bhagat saintly in the real sense so verse number 70 he says tanmaya that's the whole verse see this is the beauty of this is sutra form of writing you got to understand what was he said before so it's like a series it's like a garland in the garland the previous gem is equally important and the future gem the next one is equally important too that's how it becomes a garland sutra so tanmaya they are full with him that's what it means there's nothing else god god and only god in them that's how they be, become wherever they reside they are there whatever they do it's holy whatever they say that's pure so they live absorbed in him god consciousness because sometimes students like us we might wonder that is naraji claiming too much so over here he himself is removing this doubt from our mind and he is assuring us that no whatever i said it is 100% right that's how their life is these souls are one with god they are full with him lord alone has come to refill their heart there's nothing else in them so ego has renounced in our heart what is in our mind what is ego but in their mind ego is dead lust is dead it is gone me and mine is gone we are almost like walking the saints or walking gods actually they say upon the earth their body has become the true temple of the lord these devotees are always praying in their own hearts for the welfare of others society and naturally they become unconscious of themselves because when they are unconscious of their own ego that's how they sanctify the places glorify their actions or they are lending the authority to the scriptures people go to gaya to prostrate at the bodhi tree 
I'm sure some of you have gone there. Not because the tree is great, but because the Buddha sat there. Otherwise, Bodhi trees are other places too. Why that particular place and that particular tree? So the tree became great because of Buddha. And Gaya is sanctified because of him, Gautam. He rediscovered his immortality there. He purified that place. When people like him, they live in a place, that spot becomes a pilgrim center. My own Guruji, he lived in that house in Hushyarpur. His own place, his own house, he converted that into an ashram. Not just one or two or three or handful of people, but countless people over the years. They just go there. The minute they reach there, at the gate they fall down into smother. Otherwise, it was a house. There are a lot of other homes around that house too. People don't go into the samadhi in the other homes. But why do they go into samadhi in that house? Because a God realized person resided there. Made that place into a Tirath Satan. Because we cannot absorb greatness from outside. We loan the greatness when we break all the shackles. So that's what he did. That's what Buddha did. So Buddha did not get great because of that Bodhi tree. Bodhi tree became great because of Buddha. Because these devotees, when they soar into the higher consciousness of the pure divine content, they beam out this holiness, this purity. It radiates out. So this, these kind of devotees, they soar into the highest peak of love. This is what love is. Another name for God is what? Love. So such a short verse, Naraji is giving us uh, the complete instruction that we need to completely absorb ourselves into God consciousness. Maybe we cannot do that 24 7 yet, but at least start working on it. So that our absorption becomes such that everything we see, we see God. At least when we go into our temple area, we see only God. We hear only God. We understand Him, presence of Him, at least for a few minutes a day. That's why in Gita, Lord Krishna, what did He say? Indriyani pranyahur, indrebhya paramana, manasatu parabuddhi, yo buddhi parahatusa. So detaching from the senses, detaching from the mind, detaching from the intellect, and ultimately, yo buddhi paratusa. Know that you are that. Learn how to detach from the lower. Because we have these five senses. We know that above that the senses is mind. Above the mind is the intellect. But who is above the intellect? So we got to, this is the sadhana we need to keep on doing. So these saintly people, they have done this sadhana. That's how they realized their absoluteness, their atma. So that's how the world around them becomes divine. They are absorbed in God. God is divine. Tulsi Das Ji said, Siya Ram Bhai Sab Jag Jane. Right? 
very familiar saying of Tulsidas ji. That is uh, Tanmaya. Sab jag jane. Not just only in the temple area, then slowly it should just spread into everything. Everything is divine. Everything you hear, everything you see, everything you perceive, everything you smell is godly. Only then the mind will be purely, completely absorbed in God. That is Tanmaya. Tanmaya. If you just keep on dividing it, this is godly, this is not godly. This is better, this is worse. That is not complete absorption. It's almost like if you have a you make a rasgulla and you dip it into the syrup and it doesn't get absorbed fully in the syrup. We don't even like to eat it. If inside the rasgulla there is a little gutli left. Right? Sometimes that happens. Gulab jamun especially. I mean, rasgulla is very few people make, but gulab jamuns, we have all made it in this country when we came here. There were not too many Indian shops. Right? So sometimes gutli wale gulab jamun. So the ras did not go. So we don't want, want to have that kind of a personality where God's love has not absorbed into the inner crises of our mind. We want God and God and God to love. Okay? So dedicate everything to God. Now let's look at number 71. So he is still keep on telling us how these parubhagat live among us. Modante pitrahu devtaha nitriyantihi sanadha cheyam bhu bhavtihi. Modante pitro. Pitra means the forefathers, the ancestors. Modante rejoice. So the forefathers or the previous generations rejoice. They are fulfilled. They are happy. That from their progeny, this kind of a saint is born. Devta nrityanti, the divine beings. Devta means the good people, people who give. Devta means a giver. Good people dance in joy, nrityanti. They are happy to see some people like this. Sanatha Chayam, this earth also becomes endowed with a savior. Sanatha, Sanatha means a savior. Who means the earth, Bhavati means becomes. So this earth also becomes endowed with a savior. Sanatha. So the past generations, the forefathers rejoice in their fulfillment. That is one part of this verse. The divine beings in heaven dance in joy. So that doesn't mean the devtas are only in the heaven, but over here on the earth, wherever devta lives, that's a heaven. Don't we sometimes say that, gosh, this place I went to, it was heavenly. Okay. So sure, there must be other realms up there too, which we are not familiar with, but on this earth also, there is a heaven too. And we can make our heaven wherever we live to with our divine qualities. So the past generations rejoice in their fulfillment. The divine beings in heaven dance in joy and this earth itself becomes endowed with a spiritual savior. savior. Okay? That is like a uh, somebody who saves, somebody who takes care of it. They say, yeah. Because most of us, what do we do? We use and abuse. But Savior is the one who takes care of it. So in the earlier sutras, it was shown how many different ways the glory of a true devotee lends its holiness in his environment, actions, scriptures. But now in this verse, he is describing the influence of such a devotee, influence of such a bhagat, on the unmanifest on this world also. So it's not just the books or the people or the places. It's unmanifest because this is unmanifest. We don't see our forefathers. We don't see the devtas. 
we don't see the power that mother earth we don't see we see the earth that's why we use it or abuse it we are never thankful to it but if you understand it's a mother earth we are all familiar with the mata sita's birth and ultimately going back into the mother earth it's living there's a power that's why early in the morning when we get up we are supposed to put our feet on the earth we are supposed to kate kshama mangni chahiye that i'll be walking on you all day long you are carrying my burden please forgive me right you all remember that was i think we talked about it few weeks ago in our wednesday class we should do that so when a devotee rises to this level so we should not think that we have risen enough that's why these scriptures they help us we can keep on increasing our love for god keep on increasing the purity in us where our heart overflows with love and you remember we saw that he said that the body but this kind of a devotee is a body shivers it goes into a stump also like a pillar can't even move shedding of the tears also ecstasy of that love see mothers and fathers they have given us the birth we are familiar with it we are thankful to them and we all have done seva also but over here it's not only the mother and the father for this body they are talking about he is talking about the four fathers also pitrau this is the greatest of the devotees narad ji who is giving us this description pitrau it could be the fathers of all the spiritual culture any ancestors great rishis they all like it because they see that somebody honestly is walking on the right path so they they are all people we don't know who was our forefather in the last like it last life or a hundred years hundred lives before they are all our people all our ancestors those great people okay and then he says the gods the devtas and the earth the gu devi mother earth so they all are happy that this kind of a devotee is born they start dancing they think they will liberate us you remember that story about uh, nursing bhagwan and parlad who was parlad's father hiranyakashyap how he tortured his son when nursing bhagwan came in that half lion and a half man's body got rid of that uh, her uh, uh, nursing bad nursing uh, 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 his body because through that body he was creating a torture over there so then parlad he was a devotee he said ask whatever you want to ask god was ready to give him a boon ask whatever you want what did he ask he said i want my father's welfare even though the father who tried to kill him through several schemes and god protected and then for lot was a small boy he got protected you know what nursing bhagwan said his welfare it already has happened by having a son like you through him so it's like a pure devotion of a son liberated a father like that 
So if we cultivate this kind of a devotion in us, we become a true lover of God. We can see that how our ancestors will be. So that's what Naraj is saying that uh, blessing of the devtas, blessings of the ancestors, blessings of the mother earth is with this kind of a devotee. Those God realized saints make the whole earth blessed and the ancestors blessed with their presence. Let's look at number 72 now. Na asti teshu jati vidya rupa kul dhan kriya adi bheda. Na asti hi. There is not. See, na means not, asti means there is. So there is not. Teshu. Among them, among them means the devotees, these kind of a devotees, Parabhagat. Jati, caste, vidya, education, roop, beauty, kul, family, dhan, wealth, kriya adi means profession, etc. Bhedaha, distinction. So that means distinction due to caste, Education, culture, beauty, family, wealth, profession, etc. So among them, the perfected saints, that's what he's talking about. Among these are bhagats. There are no distinctions based upon caste, culture, beauty, family, wealth, or profession. So these are the men of realization. He's talking about these men in various periods of history, whether Christ, Buddha, Krishna, etc., there would have been no distinctions ever entertained by them. These were God incarnates. They never said that this devotee is higher and this devotee is lower. They look at only the love in the devotee's eyes because they rise above all sense of distinctions which are ordinary people like us, we entertain these distinctions all the time. We often think that this person is not from my caste or his knowledge is less than mine. We even go to this level that this person is thin and this person is fat, dark or fair, short or tall. Or sometimes people say that he is not a doctor because I belong to a family of doctors. They don't want to deal with them. We have gone too far away from this kind of a purity. Confusing and confounding separations we keep on creating in this world. Not only we don't keep it to ourselves, then we teach this to our children also. We keep on creating these distinctions in our mind based upon the caste, culture, beauty, family. So all these examples Naraji has given, this is, I'm sure this is very familiar to all of us because this is a nature of our behavior in this pluralistic world. That's why we just keep on creating more and more walls around us. Walls which is made out of ego. So these distinctions are only there in vision of one who looks at this world through his instruments of disintegration. But once you have learned how to climb to the tranquil and the chaste heights of the infinitude, these distinctions, they just dissolve. If you remember the story of Valmiki, was he conduct very good before he became a bhagat? No. He was a robber. Was Dhruv old in age? No. 
He was a little boy. How about Upja? You all have heard the story. Upja and Lord Krishna. She was a hunched back. Lord Krishna called her that you are a beautiful lady. And she said, you are making fun of me. He said, no, you are very beautiful. Or the wealth was a Sudama wealthy. He didn't even have enough food to feed his children or himself or his wife. But he has love for God. Even now when we hear the name of Sudama, what happens to us? Even people like us, we get goosebumps. That kind of a love. Sudama. He was the poorest of the poor Brahma. Bhaktiya tushyati kevlam nacha guner bhakti priyo madhava. God does not see the external qualities. And we just keep on putting so much effort, so much emphasis only in the external qualities. What does God see? Our love for him and our love, our love for him really means do we love his people or not? We are all mothers over here. What do we want our children to do after we are gone? We want them to love each other. Keep taking care of each other. I tell my children every year when they are they want to celebrate something with me, I just tell them that I don't need anything. Only thing I need is that you just do not fight with each other. As a mother, this and we I'm just an ordinary mother. And God, who's the mother and the father of all, you think he doesn't want that. So that's why I said Bhagatya Tushati Kevlam Nacha Guner Bhavanti Priyo Madhava. He wants to see only that. And when we can really feel that we are established in that kind of a love for all, no distinction, then our bhakti is increasing. So in the process of devotion, there is no distinction. That somebody is a Brahman or somebody is Kshatriya, somebody is educated, somebody is beautiful, somebody is ugly. No, this is all out of layers. We got to look at the Atma in everybody. Atma. Old or young also. Atma. Atma doesn't have any age. Next verse he says, again a very short verse. Yataha tadiyaha. Yata means because Tadiya, they are of his own nature. They are of his own nature. That means own nature means divine. So that means a true devotee recognizes all others as expression or extension of Lord. If I am an unsh of that anshi, so is that little bug out there, that bird out there, the squirrel out there. My children or my neighbor's children, everybody, we are all extension of that divinity. These saints see that. So in other words, a realized saint knows all others to be nothing other than his own self. No difference at all. <clears throat> and own self means God. See to the man of wisdom. There's only one Lord exists. One Lord. Sometimes that Lord comes down over here to play a part of a king. 
or some time it could be a playing the part of an artist playing the part of a scientist or a sage those are all faces of the same lord whole universe from these saintly people's state of mind from their standpoint whole universe is an expression of the one reality so whatever be the declaration of these great ones irrespective of their faiths they advocated because they advocated according to the time and place different language in india and different language in other places but the truth is the same because the language they spoke in or some of the ways they said the truth was conducive to the people of that time so they expressed in those ways or a different style they expressed in but there's no difference in the truth because it was their divine experience they all thundered the same truth that the self god alone is all this they all said that distinctions exist eh? because sometimes we just pay too much attention to the distinctions eh? distinctions exist only for those who have not reached the topmost peak the truly great realize that all belong to him lord alone is this is their final declaration because they experienced it they saw it there is no two way about it so among these supreme devotees there is no greater no lesser it's not that somebody has realized less and somebody has realized more all of us belong to him because they all saw nothing but the lord in everybody so question like this who is the greatest devotee doesn't even exist in their mind they are all same all devotees belong to god all devotees are part of god and if there is a distinction it's only distinction at the level of a, a devotion that is my bhakti to that level or but no distinction age caste knowledge culture wealth no distinction bhakti and bhakti alone love and love alone we need to increase our devotion on this path that's it so why do we do sadhana to increase the devotion love god next verse is um not very long either i mean i'm talking about the uh, size of the verse but there's a lot of uh, deep message in there so i'll finish it next week but i will try to start it today so that you can start thinking about it vadah na avalambaya vada means disputation argument vadah controversy na means not avalambaya should enter into so what he is saying that vain disputation and discussion should not be entered into that's a wastage of time a bhagat doesn't want to do that because bhagat knows that my life my life is over here to please my lord either do the seva or just stay absorbed in him all the time i don't want to waste time I'll end today's class with this story. Actually, it's a real story because in old times they used to have discussions. Because discussions they do help to a certain point, but this God realized people. Just like Narad Ji is saying, they are no use. You have all heard about Ramakrishna Paramahansa. I'm sure you have. god realized the saint 
in his time there was a scholar in calcutta keshav chandra he was the head of the brahm samaj he wanted to reform the society also there was a movement started by him at that time and he was very intellectual and he wanted to have more and more people in his organization but people were not coming to him nobody was listening to him and he was say, watching that everybody is going to ramkrishna paramhans so he sent a message to him he said i want to engage in a discussion with you because back then it was like a, a fashion that whoever loses the discussion will lose all the disciples and all the disciples will go to the winner so he wanted to have a discussion and he said i am such an intellectual i will win so that's how i'll gain popularity so all ram krishna paramhansa's disciple said he is a vicious man please don't have a discussion he has sent you the message but don't do that he is a dangerous man ram krishna paramhansa said no let him come in call him i'll wait for him impatiently he got the message keshav chandra came and he ram chandra uh, paramhansa he hugged him and he said come and come i been waiting for you so long i have heard so much about you keshav chandra forgot one thing that in order in order to have discussion or argument you need two people one person alone cannot do it so he said i want to have a discussion with you he said okay keshav chandra said there is no god reply to that ram krishna paramhans said wow what a statement and he gave him a hug he said the world is created by god you said world is created by god but who created god he wanted to have a discussion so ram krishna paramhans gave him a hug again he said you are amazing keshav chandra's argument became weaker and weaker no matter what he said he just got the hug and he said you are great finally keshav chandra said what kind of a man are you you are not arguing with me ram krishna ji said i am arguing but you are not understanding he said what do you mean he said for me you are the proof of god when i see your phenomenal intellect i think who has created such a intellect he must be a god so arguments can show us the way they cannot take us all the way so that's why narad ji is saying in this verse over here beautifully vadan avalambaya don't waste time in the arguments okay so we'll discuss more about this verse next week because there's a lot more to say about it but i wanted to just tell you this real story it's not a fictitious story so let's uh, do the shanti mantra om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnase purnamadaye purnameva visheshyate om shanti 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 thank you very much